Spelunky, Faster Than Light, The Binding of Isaac, Slay the Spire, Hades. Roguelikes are probably my favorite gaming genre of all time. Games that don't have a set of carefully designed levels that you have to go through, but rather a procedurally generated gauntlet of dungeons or fights that change every time you play the game. As you go through, you level up your character and collect more of the randomized gear, but once you die, you get sent back to the beginning and lose all progress. It's a very addicting format. And I've always believed that the Pokemon franchise is perfect for a roguelike game. Enter Emerald Rogue. Start your playthrough with an empty bag and one measly starter. Then, choose between routes to catch more Pokemon on and build your team, find shops to buy items on, and at the end of each stage, face a random gym leader with a random team. Beat all eight gym leaders, four elite four members, and two champions to beat the run. If any of the trainers along the way wipe you out, you go back to the beginning with nothing but your starter. You just witnessed my entire first attempt of playing this game. If you're burning to see what random stuff I roll in attempt two, you're already as addicted to roguelikes as I am. I'm Pokemon Challenges, and this is the journey of how I beat my first run of Pokemon Emerald Rogue. Failure is just a part of the process when it comes to roguelikes. The deeper you go, the more you learn about the game and its systems, and the better equipped you are to handle whatever it throws at you the next time around. I fire up another round and pick up a bigger team with better type coverage. This time, I pull Winona as my first gym leader and run through her with ease, despite a scary moment thanks to Double Team. Oh boy, come on. Really? The rest that you can choose between an Emerald Rogue on the map screen aren't just valuable for picking up new Pokemon, items are all over the place in these routes as well. Not only can you grab healing items and Pokeballs, you can find stuff like mints to change your Pokemon's natures or sell at marts. Items are also valuable at the mart encounters, where you can pick up stuff like battle items and berries, which you absolutely will need to beat the gym leaders at the end of each level. Chat convinced me to do the game show encounter here. Why? Talking to Waluigi. Welcome to my ever so lovely setup game show. This game is simple. You'll get two choices. One might be good, one might be bad. Now, onto round one. We always go left, guys. Left is law. Oh, Rip just got a bit stronger. Oh shit, what does that mean? Ooh, 5k, let's go! Ooh, IVs went up. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Oh my god, I'm loaded, chat! With all the mints that I found, I have infinite money! Was that it? Are we done? All this excitement caused me to forget about catching a sixth Pokemon, though, which probably would have been nice against the upcoming Roxanne fight. Instead, I have no answer for Rosita Wudo, and I wipe again. But I think I'm starting to get the hang of this, and I'm already really addicted. My biggest lesson is to always keep my party filled and get six Pokemon as soon as possible. I start up another run and immediately disregard that lesson and leave a slot open in my party. I head into the first leader fight, which just so happens to be Roxanne again. This time, though, we've picked up a perfect answer. Ponyard who can tank just about anything that Roxanne throws at it. Notice how Roxanne's team was different every time I play it through. The gym leader's Pokemon are picked from a big pool of Pokemon and put together randomly, and then adjusted for difficulty depending on where you encounter them in the run. We get to move on from the first badge and into the second level. Hey, yay, yeah, whoa, whoa, you were just stoning out looking at some other screen while watching this, weren't you? Come on, pay a little attention to me here. Or like, at least subscribe while you're here? You know, so I can be your background noise for many future videos. The early parts of roguelikes are rarely easy, especially since I obviously immediately set the game's difficulty to the highest setting and disabled all options that would help me when I started my first run. A lot hinges on the luck of the draw early on in roguelikes, and it's up to you to deal with whatever the game throws at you. In Emerald Rogue, it's no different, as each gym leader you fight is random, making the earliest fights the most difficult to plan for. You pulled Flannery and everything in your party's weak to fire? GG, good luck next time. This may not be a Nuzlocke, but I do lose every Pokemon that faints for good, so the more Peko I had to sacrifice against Roxanne's Tyrant needs to be replaced. I also need to fill that empty slot I had. Pokeballs are a very limited resource in this game, but I have enough balls to cycle through a few options, and by the time we head to Gym 2, I've added Mr. Mime, Drillbur, Houndor, and Sandshrew to the Ponyard and Chinchu I kept from the first level. We draw Liza from Titan Liza for our second gym battle, and we get our first big break of the run. The gym leaders in Emerald Rogue have permanent, favorable weather and terrain. For the Psychic Leader Liza, that means her Pokemon get to enjoy the 1.5x boost Psychic Terrain grants to Psychic moves for the whole battle. There was absolutely no way to plan my team for this, but thankfully, I have a pair of Dark Types in Houndoom and Ponyard to make this fight manageable. Ponyard is definitely the MVP of the run so far, cleaning up against both gym leaders. Through the first couple of sections, we've mostly been taking what we can get to build our team. As we push towards our third gym leader, though, our team is finally starting to feel a little bit more coherent. We had a key piece of the team in Bronzong, who offers a great defensive typing and bulk on top of some support moves that will really help us deal with the randomness of the run. As we enter gym number three, two weather leaders are still left to encounter, Huan in his reign and Flannery in her sun. 
Six gym leaders left means there's a 1 in 3 chance that the next gym leader will have permanent weather. A fire type leader boosted by sun would be a huge problem for my team, which is currently loaded with steel types. We lead with our heat proof bronzong, loaded up with rain dance and sunny day TMs from one of the mart stations to cancel out the enemy's weather. If I happen to run into Flannery, I can rain dance, and if I happen to run into Huan, I can sunny day. The preparation immediately pays off, as out comes Huan. We beat his reign with Sunny Day, and the battle is basically over on turn 1. The dribble we caught during the second section has evolved into an Excadrill, and after weakening Wishy Washy, it's able to get behind a substitute in the sun and sweep one with ease. As I'm preparing for the fourth gym leader, another interesting piece of Emerald Rogue strategy reveals itself. I catch an Imp Dimp, hoping to have the bulky support and surprising strength of Grimmsnarl ready for the fourth gym leader. But because of the way experience share works in this game, my Imp Dimp was immediately brought up to the level cap and stuck in its much weaker second form. I hold onto it anyway, but it's much less useful for this fight. I'll have to wait until the next set of encounters raises the level cap to evolve it, and we have to keep that in mind for any not fully evolved Pokemon that we run into throughout the rest of the run. At the shop I pick up a very useful battle item in the Choice Scarf and equip Mr. Mime with it. Choice Scarf locks the user into using only one move, but increases its speed. Flannery is still really terrifying, so I stick with the lead Bronzong strategy. Ideally I want to see Winona here, as Excadrill has an excellent matchup against her. I end up getting her, and the fourth badge is in my sights. Wait, what's- oh, I forgot to restore Rock Slide PP? <laughs> Yeah, PP does not restore unless you use the heal spots. It's another resource you have to keep in mind and manage as you go through the run. This fight just went from completely free to the first truly terrifying fight of the run. It didn't really help that I totally brain farted on the way the Destiny Bond works. When a Pokemon uses Destiny Bond, it'll take down any opponent that knocks it out until it uses its next move. Look how confident I am in my utterly wrong strategy here. <laughs> not the best trade I've ever made. Yeah, fuck you. Oh wait, <laughs> that's not how that move works. <laughs> Ah, uh, never mind. It's fine. I maneuver myself into a situation where I have a free turn to use a Lepa Barrier to restore Excadrill's Rock Slide PP, but a miss puts me in an absolutely terrible spot. Maybe I just... I, I think I have to give up the Excadrill. Oh my god. Every time, man! Yeah, I used Agility too, so we just, we just lose. There's nothing we can do. To me, it looks like this is game over. Nothing on my team outspeeds the Moltres, and the things that don't get one-shot by it can never kill it. However, I have one more ace up my sleeve. My Mr. Mime knows the move Trick, which makes it switch its held item with its opponent. The win con is um, he sees kill with Sucker Punch, and we go for Trick with Choice Scarf. Unreal. Okay, okay, okay. He's not locked in yet, right? Is he locked now? I think he's locked next turn, right? And now he's locked into Air Slash, and now Bronzong can win. But am I fucking goaded or what? The thing is, if he locks himself into like, there actually so much had to happen there for that to be, for that to go right. But yeah, yeah. If he locks Fiery Wrath, um, it's just GG. Like he had to go exactly Sucker Punch into, not Fiery Wrath. This fight was unnecessarily difficult, but being the greatest Nuzlocker in the world is being able to clean up your own mess. I'm through four badges on my third run here, and I'm starting to get the hang of things. Unfortunately, I had a pretty strong team with diverse types, and a lot of it was lost to Winona. I just couldn't find a way to transition into a clean Excadrill sweep here. You know what else I couldn't find a transition for? Today's ad read. <laughs> Manscaped is the sponsor of today's video, and they have something special for you, the Platinum Package 4.0. It comes with so many wonderful things. Not only these two guys that you know from previous packages, you got the lawnmower to shave your balls, you got the weed whacker to shave your nose hair and your ear hair, get all that cleaned up. You also get great new products from Manscaped, such as the stick deodorant, aluminum free. How's he smelling fresh and nice, okay? The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant is still in there. The Crop Reviver Spray, it's in there, as it should be. And you get the Manscaped Body Wash and the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. You have a whole thing. You can take this whole thing on a trip with you. That's all you'll ever need to be clean. Maybe a toothbrush, okay, fine. I'm, I'm sure that's, that's coming too. Anyway, Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 has all that for you. And you can sign up for the Peak Hygiene Plan to have all these products refreshed and delivered as soon as you need them. What's not to love? Link is in the description or in the comments. Thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Let's play some more Emerald Rogue. Sometimes Emerald Rogue randomly offers you the chance to revive one of three random Pokemon that you've lost during the run. And I'm so happy to see the one that I regret losing the most, Excadrill. With only four gym leaders left, I can start being even more specific in my preparation. It's just Watson, Norman, Brawly, and Flannery left. Unfortunately, I'm not offered much of anything that helps against Brawly. Lapras and Abomasnow are good encounters here, but they don't help with my fighting weakness. So I think if it's Brawly, we just kind of lose. 
Um, I've already kind of accepted that. Like, there's no amount of team building we can do with that. I think we just weaken our other options. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> GG! I had Bronzong in the lead here to keep our anti-weather strategy from earlier, but it turns out it's the perfect choice for Brawly as well. I feel a lot more comfortable using strategies that lose to crits, like stacking up Iron Defense in a game like Emerald Rogue, than I do in a Nuzlocke. This is because here, there is no box, and I can only hold six Pokémon at a time. So if a Pokémon is replaced by a better one, I have to get rid of it for good. Pokémon are more expendable because of this. I realize that my win condition against Brawly here is him not having any special attackers. I start setting up Bronzong and avoid the few crits that could have ended my run. This fight also showcases why I usually ban healing items in my other challenges. A plus six defense Bronzong is already hard enough to break. With chances to heal, it just absolutely runs anything over. On our way to the sixth leader fight, we run into our first legendary encounter and add Tapu Bulu to our team. Bronzong has been waiting for this moment as Flannery finally appears. I get off the rain dance and I'm looking pretty good. Flannery's Rotom doesn't have Hidden Power Grass to threaten my lantern. I just have to sacrifice Lapras to get Tapu Bulu in and... Whoa. Oof. Oof. Oh, uh, I think I actually just lose. Maybe extra speeds at speeds because of plus speed nature or some bullshit. Oh my god, it does. Holy shit. This fight was certainly won by the fact that my Excadrill had a plus speed nature. Because at level 65, an optimal Volcarona does outspeed an optimal Excadrill by 3 speed points. Uh, and now my fucking earthquake damage is too low, and he's gonna lock himself into a fire type move, and I'm fucked. Well, flinchy flinchy. Nice. Oh my god, I can't believe this run is still alive. Talk about clutch. Not just the crit or the fact that I outsped, the fact that I had Exodrill in the first place. Remember, he came back from the revival encounter at the beginning of the route, and without him, there's no way we get past Flannery there. One of the best feelings in a roguelike is building up momentum. You clear a bunch of rooms, get some solid rewards, and your build starts to come together. I'm finally starting to feel that this run is headed that way as I go into the 7th Gym Leader. Despite losing our Legendary, we have a really strong team with some great synergies. With 6 Gym Leaders down, we know it's just Watson and Norman left before we get to the end game of the Elite Four, Wallace and Steven. I feel good about my matchup into both leaders, but my team has a huge ground weakness at the moment, and at this point everything is Earthquake. I really need an immunity. Altaria is an encounter for me and solves my problem. I add another trio of immunities in Runa Regis as well, who can soak up fighting, normal, and electric attacks. They join Excadrill, Lantern, Bronzong, and Duraludon as we push onwards. We pull Watson, and with three electric immunities on the board, I have absolutely no trouble. I only have to navigate past Rota Mo, which is the only thing that can touch Volt Absorb Lantern. Seven badges down, and that momentum is still rolling. Excadrill and Altaria in particular have formed a very strong core. Excadrill's steel typing can cover Altaria's rock and dragon weaknesses, while Altaria's ground immunity and fighting and fire resist cover just about anything that threatens Excadrill. I have more than enough steel types to take down Norman, so my team building is now looking towards the Elite Four. I get another chance at a revival, so I take Houndoom to get a dark type for Phoebe's ghost type and Sydney's dark types. Unfortunately, reviving too many times during a run can result in your run getting cursed. Naturally, this immediately happens to me and I get one of the random curses. This one increases shop prices by 40%, which is kind of huge. Money is a really important resource and helps immensely with team building. I'll be limited on balls, potions, and held items for the rest of the run. I also run into a Draco Vish, and when you get a chance to click Vicious Ren, you take it, no matter how good the Pokemon it's replacing has been. Bronzong put in some work, but I feel like it's overstated its welcome. I also see one new encounter type here, a Strong Trainer, who allows me to pick one of her Pokemon after I wreck her team. I grab the Galarian Weezing, who offers two immunities thanks to its Fairy type and Levitate ability. Fantastic pickup for the upcoming Drake fight. The Excadrill and Altaria do appear to be way too much for Norman. The pair illustrates their synergy perfectly in this battle, with Altaria baiting Ice Beams for Excadrill, which could bait Earthquakes for both Altaria and Weezing. Runarigas finally gets to use all of those immunities too, and it gets to just sit on the field and stack Iron Defenses before cleaning up with Body Press. It's time for the Elite Four. And that means our information advantage is gone. Now we have to be prepared for any one of them. And with Dark, Ice, Ghost, and Dragons on the table, it's hard to cover everything. I don't get anything notable in our pre-fight encounters and go in with the same team that took down Norman. Drake is first. A favorable draw since we have Steel and Fairy types on our team to take down his dragons. Weezing and Excadrill are nearly untouchable together here, as Excadrill can resist Dragon and be the offense while Weezing serves as a ground immune switch in. This, however, is a problem. Haxorus's Mold Breaker nullifies Weezing's Levitate and forces me to find another way around this fight. Yeah, let's give this Wandering Spirit and then maybe we can Weezing? I'm gonna substitute. Interesting. I'm assuming that does not make contacts. Okay. 
He's only increasing his damage. I'm increasing my defense and my damage. I think I should have attacked. I definitely should have attacked. If he kills me now, I wipe. Just three hit? Something? Come on! Dude, one time? Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> Whew. Well, this is really scary. This is a random move, huh? Oh, I guess... Okay, he has... He's lost three Mons. I could try to sweep with Dracovish Outrage. I could Max Potion, I guess. And, like, eat a Draco, potentially. This is pretty likely to be a special attacker. I'm gonna go Lantern and Slow Volt Switch. Sick. I think I'm gonna try to go for the Dracovish Sweep. But I guess... Let's see, what could be in the back? What, like, Dialga probably doesn't die to Outrage? I mean, like, a bunch of shit doesn't, like, die to Outrage if it's bulky enough, right? It's kind of risky. Salamence. Garchomp wouldn't die to Outrage. I don't like the plan that much. Let's stay for one turn and Signal Beam and see what happens. I think this is choice. Okay. Kind of looks like Scarf to me. It's also in the the surf is in the sun, by the way. Oh, it might be specs then, actually. I guess I can just always kill this with Dracovish, and then I'm set up pretty well for the next whatever comes in. Although I guess I'm locked into Dragon Rush. Interesting. Oh yeah, that kind of called that, didn't I? I think it is wheezing time, but this might have a Steel type move. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so I think I go wheezing into Excadrill and check if he has coverage for Exco. Nice. Fire Blast would be pretty ruinous. If I want to be extra safe, I go Lantern, but st like rocks are up. I can't do this infinitely. I guess he hasn't checked. He should, in theory, know about left about levitate because I haven't shown neutralizing gas. But I don't know if AI actually works that way. I'm also pretty sure Excadrill doesn't one shot this because Dialga is bulky as shit. So like I can't even let it stand. Dude, Dialga is 100, 120 physical defense. This does not die to earthquake, my dude. I think I have to lantern to check what the coverage move is. Oh, and before he uses Earth Power, dude. Okay, good thing I didn't go X guy, I guess. Let's try Altaria. And just have him use the Draco. Um, I think I should have let him Draco into uh, Excadrill there. Okay, I have an idea, but I just wasted a pivot. Let's go Altaria and go Excadrill on a Draco. And then maybe sub for a Fire Blast miss. Same damage. This should be Draco. I don't think Fire Blast kills, right? I'm slower here, by the way. I can sack Altaria to the Draco. That puts me in a much better position. Because that means X has more chances to dodge Fire Blast, the substitute. I'm sacking here. Haban Berry. I don't think it matters, but maybe. Okay. I'm pretty sure Excadrill is faster. Nice. I think it's Swords Dance into Earthquake here. Wait, it's Lugia in the back. He's gonna go Lugia. I should EQ twice, I think. I guess it doesn't really matter. I think EQ once is better. Did I say Lugia? I meant Latios. I'm pretty sure EQ doesn't kill, but... Um, oh, fuck. I'm pr so, Latios showed Surf. And it's technically optimal, I think, because I don't think Excadrill is ever switching back in after this, right? It might... Oh, this is a really tough call. I think, I think there's a good chance that what I have left beats what he has left. Um, my, okay, so, 
my thinking is, though, that if Latios' best move on this is Surf, which it might be, then being higher HP is better so we don't bait random move, which means we can bait Surf, which means we can go Dracovish. Um, I don't like subbing again here. I'm going to Earthquake twice. My reasoning is that Earthquake Crit is a way to keep Substitute up, and I th I'm pretty sure I have to switch out if Latios comes out, so the Sword Stance is worthless. Actually really close to killing there. Plus he can Fire Blast miss, and like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna substitute again here. I don't think there's a reason to. I don't like Rock Slide miss range here. I, like, he, I, I guess he could switch into Latios here, but... I, I really don't like the substitute. Um, I can only do one more, and like... It might put me into Draco range or whatever of Latios, which makes my position weaker for like pivoting afterwards. Um, I'm just gonna kill this. I'd rather save the HP on substitute. I think going for the Fire Blast miss is not worth it. So this should be Latios, and I'm, the thing is, in in like Sun, I don't even know if his Surf is his best move, but it was his best. I guess he random moved it on Rodriguez. I know that this is choice, but I fucking hate that I pivoted one more time on Lantern. I think I have to almost Lantern, in case it's Draco here. I guess like, yeah, Weezing tanks Surf, right? I think Weezing is probably the middle ground. Yeah, okay, this is actually super good. Okay, so either I Willow incoming or I just use um, Strange Steam. AI always switches here, I'm pretty sure. Interesting, okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is a pretty good Pokemon. Like, what is the worst thing it can use here? Fire Blast doesn't even work because of Airlock, right? Like, it's not even that much. Or like V-Creator or whatever. And if he, if he, if he D-dances on my Switch here, I'm super fucked. I, I always Sludge Bomb because Strange Steam can miss and Sludge Bomb will kill. That's... Completely fly fine, right? It's flying also, but it's also fine. I don't know why this has fly, by the way. It's pretty stupid. Okay, and now Latios, I think, will lock himself into a psychic type move, which is kind of bad. <laughs> it should be a, po a psychic type move here always. I don't think there's any punishes for going to Dracovish. Uh, I guess, like, we don't actually know what item it is, because it could be Scarf, so it would outspeed Dracovish, but if he's still, like... Oh, fuck, I don't know. Did we ever see any damn? We saw Surf Rolls on Lantern. I think this is Specs. I'm pretty sure this is Specs. With the Surf damage that it did to Sun, Assault Vest, Lantern. I'm pretty sure it's Specs. Scarf Latios would just be weird, right? I'm going Draco here. Okay. So if I live this, I, I win because I have Lantern. Sick. GG. Mostly to make my chat happy, I go to another new encounter type in the next area. It grants me the chance to catch one Pokemon, and I get a Toucan on. With Adamant Nature and Skill Ink, this is actually shockingly useful. Letoucan has arrived. Glacia is our second Elite Four fight, and by far the one we're least prepared for. Can you find the Ice-type resistance on this team? Oh, dude, this team is so bad to Glacia. I didn't really consider this, but I don't think I have that many options. Like, what, was I going to replace Runa Reeves with Wigglytuff? Yeah, Freeze Dry also exists in this game. It's not like the routes I picked gave me anything better to choose from. Tukanon comes just shy of taking out Glacius Lapras with a Rock Blast and our back is against the wall. This is by far the most dramatic fight of this video, so I'll let the live commentary take over from here. Crit? Unlucky. The Toucan has left. Okay, what am I killing this with? I think it's probably Excadrill. I can kill with Volt Switch Lantern, but... Lantern into Weezing gives me an opportunity to maybe set up some spikes. I think I like that. That's a little bit more defensive, but... I think the only way I win is through stall, right?
At least we get to level up. Oh my fucking god. I don't even know what this thing does. This is a physical attacker though, right? So I'm gonna Will-O-Wisp this. Actually, oh yeah, true, this is really slow as well. Oh yeah, I get absolutely fucking destroyed. Choice Man would be fucking sick here, I am. I think I gotta do spikes. Okay, staying in. Okay, it's Sword Stance, that's... Pretty scary. Um... I mean, at least it's slow, right? This thing is so bulky. It's not like I have a switch in. Yeah. At least I'm faster. Okay. I think I really don't like the missed chance of Strange Steam here. Crit would be huge. Oh, he's so fucking dumb. Okay. Back to Rotom. Gotta go Lantern, right? And then heal. Nice. Is he choiced? We still don't know, right? I'm I think we think he's choiced. Yeah. Does she mega? I don't know if she can't I don't think I enabled Mega. If he rolls like speed on Moody, that's kinda bad, huh? He could so if he's Moody, he rolls plus speed or plus defense, I think, to live. Does it get freeze dry? Uh, Excadrill is maybe just better. But it's not like Rock Slide one shots. I don't think Dracovish kills it. Let's go to Excadrill. Uh, at this HP, maybe it does actually. I think it was Dracovish here. Well, oh, fuck it. Okay. Okay. Huge crit. I, uh, I barely don't outspeed this. Probably Earth Power. I think it's gotta be wheezing. Yeah, Glacia is switching too much. Okay. That's not great. Um. That's really not great. I really thought there was a ground move coming there. East. Is this Specs? I think this is Specs. Oh, it has to be Boots because it didn't get poisoned. You're right. Okay. Oh, fuck, dude. Lantern? Does Lantern live a Draco? I have AV. I'm pretty sure I live. And then I just fucking heal. Like, what the fuck is it gonna do? Does this get freeze dry? I guess I'll use a ground type move. Uh, there's a chance I die, I think. Fuck, man. Uh, I guess if he Dracos, I'm fine though, right? Obviously, he's never using Draco Meteor, yeah. I think it's always Fusion Flare. Well, he doesn't know about Levitate, right? So it might be ground type move. Fuck. I think it's Dracovish, right? Lost a lot of HP on Weezing for nothing there. Oh, that's so spooky, man. Okay, so we see Roost, we see Fusion Flare. I could sack. I will also be stuck in Outrage if I do this. Um, I can kind of stall this out a little bit. I kind of want to go Lantern. I think... Okay, so it's either an Ice move or a Ground move last, I think. We've only seen Roost and Fusion Flare. It's almost certainly Draco Meteor here. I don't think... Does this even get fucking Freeze Dry? I don't think so. I think I'm gonna Lantern. Okay. Well, if he gets Freeze Dry, it's kind of... I think I have to Outrage. 
Holy fucking shit. Okay. Jesus. Maybe we live that? Yeah. Okay. Um, cause if, if that's not an immunity, then we might get three turn outrage there and die, right? Okay. Um, I really wish I had Iron Head on Excadrill, but Rock Slide might kill. Um, it should be Dazzling Gleam again. I think Exca is just kind of free here, right? I can even substitute once, maybe. Maybe. No, probably. It's probably not worth it, right? I do not think Rock Slide will kill this. I think... I think Exca is free here. I don't think he should... Uh, or reveal here. He sees a kill, right? That's so fucking unfortunate, man. It's kind of fine, because I live, but... I can only set up one sub. I don't know if this slide will kill. I think I substitute once, and then I max potion. Am I even faster than this? I think I'm slower. Yeah, good thing I checked, holy shit. Yeah, let's max potion, I think it's correct here. <sighs> I think... I could continue Switch, I could go to like Lantern. Lantern kind of fucking owns this guy's shit. And I can heal like my half, half of my team in the back if I really want to. Like, I don't think this does anything to Lantern, right? Interesting. Why was that the move? Can I get... Slow Volt Switch Dracovish in on this? What's left in the back? It's Glalie plus one unrevealed, right? I think. Oh, Rotom. I think Dracovish sweeps, right? Oh, we still have no Rotom's item match room. But I mean, that's fine. Let's do this. I don't know why it's not using a fairy move. Let's see how many kills I can get with Dracovish here, and if Rotom comes out, I just go back to Lantern, and, um, just chill, right? Well, I guess, does this get Ice Shard? I think I should have healed Draco before. Okay, good thing I flinched. <laughs> it would probably not run Ice Shard. Wait, we saw Ice Beam, Dazzling Gleam. I guess we, it's not using Aurora Veil. This might have Ice Shard, right? I'm healing Dracovish. I guess it wouldn't kill Dra- uh, we, maybe with Hail. I'm healing Dracovish. It's a little bit shitty. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Fucking go for it, I don't know. Max potions are pretty fucking valuable. Oh, citrus. I don't think that matters, right? Yeah, no shot. Okay. Okay, so we know item on this, I guess, but. Oh, I guess this could actually have ice shard, huh? I really should have healed. Ah, I was greedy. But now it's like... Oh, dude, I threw. Because now it's really awkward. Because what if he freeze rise now? I really don't like sacking something here. Ugh. I'm going to run I don't know. So awkward. It didn't have Ice Shard. Unlucky. Oh my god. And he gets the speed. Oh, he actually gets the fucking speed! Dude, imagine getting this Omega punished. I think I have to sack Renarigas and then heal the Lantern. This could have Earthquake, but Exca lives. I guess that's what we do. See ya, Renarigas. You were not as useful as I thought you were going to be. Oh my god, dude. Oh, what an insane punish, dude. Holy shit. I should've just... I failed to think like one step further. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I guess it's... Yeah, yeah, okay, no, we're fine, we're fine. we we'll just kill with Exca here. We saw everything, right? Earthquake is same damage, but it can't miss. I was just thinking if this could have, like, fucking air balloon or levitate or some stupid shit. Wow, what a fucking punish for not healing the Dracovish. That's crazy. I had to invest the max potion anyway now. And I lost a Mon for it. Technically not over, right? 
Excadrill Mold Breaker would go you know, kind of hard here, but I still don't know if this is Scarf or not, so... I have to heal. I don't think I use the full restore. I can always max potion plus full heal. Might as well do it over two turns. Plus he's gonna run out of Blizzard PP here. Plus Scald Thaws, I think. Jesus fucking Christ, man. This run is so insane. <laughs> what a comeback. Dude, I, clicking the Outrage was really huge. I think that must have been a range. Am I in crit range? I don't think so. Maybe? I, I, he's struggling anyway, right? Holy shit. After beating Glacia, I hit the most valuable Pokemon of the entire late game on the first route in the next section, Ribombi. Not only is the fairy type really nice to have for Sydney coming up, but Ribombi has two of Pokemon's most broken moves in its learn set. And not only are these moves broken by themselves, they get even more broken when put together. I'm talking about Substitute and Quiver Dance. Substitute's ability to eat attacks and allow for setup would be incredibly strong for us, even if the AI could properly play around it, which it didn't at multiple times throughout the run. Quiver Dance, meanwhile, is one of the most powerful setup moves in the game boosting special attack, special defense, and speed all by one stage. It's a special Dragon Dance that also boosts bulk, or if you'd rather, a Calm Mind that also boosts speed. There's a reason it's one of the least distributed moves in the game. It's crazy good, and we're going to ride it to victory. I'm not going to lie to you, setup moves and substitute are really broken in this game, and they allowed me to sweep the rest of the boss fights with ease. This is actually remarkably similar to other roguelikes in my experience. There are certain late game builds and combos that are just intentionally designed to be so good that the run becomes free once you unlock them. I guess the difference is that an Aphrodite Ares build in Hades is just more fun than clicking substitute. Regardless, this ROM hack is fantastic, and I can't wait to crack it open with future challenge runs. Make sure to stay tuned.